hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be making a coconut cake. We're going to be making it from scratch. Uh, this is a, a little surprise for my dad. He loves coconut cake. So this came from the uh, website cookingclassy.com and I'll put a link to the, uh, the recipe in the description. This coconut cake is one of the best cakes you'll ever make, according to this. It's light and fluffy, it's brimming with sweet coconut flavor, and it's finished with a rich and creamy cream cheese frosting. It's been a reader favorite recipe for years, and it's one of my family's favorites. Um, I've never made this particular recipe before, so this is a new one for me. Um, you see there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of steps. There's a lot of mixing um, that I will have to do separately. It's going to have to be done with an electric mixer. Um, I'm only going to show you the hand mixing because the electric mixer is really loud. <laughs> but okay, first we have a list of ingredients for the cake itself, and then we have all the stuff you need for the frosting. All right, for the cake, we're going to need three cups of cake flour, and in this instance, you're actually using soft as silk, which is an enriched cake flour. Here, three cups of that. One tablespoon of baking powder. And I have the Rumford Aluminum Free Baking Powder. We're going to need one tablespoon of that. Uh, one half teaspoon of salt, which I already put in here. Uh, two cups of granulated sugar. That's what we have in here. Two whole cups of sugar. Okay, so we have the sugar. We also have three quarters of a cup of unsalted butter at room temperature, which is going to be one and a half sticks of butter. Now that is just for the cake. There's going to be another... Um, one and a half sticks in the icing. So this is definitely not a health food, but I bet it's going to be good. Quarter of a cup of vegetable oil or canola oil. I have here uh, Carlini pure vegetable oil that I got at Aldi. Actually, a lot of these ingredients came from there. And there's the, the oil right there. You're also going to need one and one third cups of well shaken canned coconut milk at room temperature. Um, I poured one cup into here. I'm going to have to pour the rest in a minute. This is Goya coconut milk. It's at room temperature. And here is one cup of it. It kind of looks like buttermilk if you look at the top of it. So we'll need one and one third cups. I'm going to have to get the remaining third out at that time. We also need two large eggs at room temperature, yolks and whites separated. So here are the two egg whites and the two egg yolks. One of them broke when I separated them. Okay, and you also need one teaspoon of coconut extract, which um, I'm using McCormick coconut extract right here. And it's clear and so it smells like suntan lotion. <laughs> it really does. Okay, and you also need a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. This is my half teaspoon. And I'm using Stone Mill Essentials Pure Vanilla Extract. This one actually came from Aldi. Alright, and four large egg whites at room temperature. That's this one. That's the four egg whites. And an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. That's just a little bit in there. It's not cocaine. It's not going to be that good of a cake. That's just cream of tartars. Nothing exciting. All right. Now, for the cake, you're going to start down at the bottom, and we're going to start with this part first. And then we will read the ingredients for the frosting when we get to that point. You preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Then, butter three 9-inch round cake pans and line the bottom of each with a round of parchment paper. Butter parchment paper and set pans aside. So here's one of the pans here. And I cut, I have three, just like this, nice and buttered. And then I cut a parchment round for each of the three pans. 
and then it's buttered also. So it's, it's in there and ready to go. All right, so that's done. Next, sift cake flour into a large mixing bowl. It's already sifted, so I don't actually have to do that. I have it right here. Here we have the three cups of um, cake flour. So you want to put that in a large mixing bowl right here. Just like that. So that's the three cups of cake flour right there. See how pretty? Now you're going to add the baking powder and salt. So the baking powder here, we need a tablespoon of this baking powder. Oops, I didn't take the top off. Let me uh, get that real quick. Okay. So one tablespoon of baking powder. Now, I have it in here, and I'm just going to kind of shake it over the top of that flour. Just move it around and shake it all about. Do the hokey pokey. Now we're done with that. Baking, get out there. Baking powder and salt. Get the salt. And again, I'm just going to shake it over the top to help distribute it a little better. So you're not just dumping it in one spot. Now we take our whisk. We just whisk it together. stand mixer fitted with the paddle attachment blend together granulated sugar butter and canola oil on medium speed until well combined um, I don't have a stand mixer I'm actually going to be doing this with a hand mixer and I'm going to do that right now I'm going to do that separately okay I have now blended together the sugar the butter and the oil and it said to scrape down the sides. I don't know why, but to me that right now this looks like grits or something. It has a consistency of boiled grits. <laughs> I doubt it tastes like grits though. Okay. Now what we need to do with this now, okay, after you blend it thoroughly like this here, you're going to add in the egg yolks one at a time and mix until combined after each addition but not the egg whites, just the yellows. Then mix in the coconut and vanilla extracts and scrape down the bowl again. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to add in the eggs and then I'll show you what that looks like and then I will add in the coconut and vanilla extracts. Okay, now we've added the eggs and look, it's more yellow, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it looks like scrambled eggs, which technically it kinda is. We added the two egg yolks, and again, we're scraping the sides. It has become very sticky. <laughs> Look at that. It's really sticking to my spatula here. Very firm look <laughs> yeah that's all right okay now that we've done this we need to add in the coconut and the vanilla extracts and now I'm going to mix that in with my hand mixer all right it doesn't really look any different but I've added in the coconut and the vanilla so again we have to kind of scrape it down off the sides I don't, again, I don't have a stand mixer, so I had to do this with a hand mixer and it kind of flings everything up. <laughs> it has a 
nice smooth texture to it. Look at that. That's the butter, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. Next, we want to add one third of the flour mixture and blend until just combined. Okay, so now I'm going to have to add one third of this. I think I'm actually going to have to do it in a bigger bowl. This is, <laughs> I just wanted to use this bowl to do this part. So I'm going to actually transfer this to a bigger bowl. So I'll have a bowl big enough to mix everything together. Okay, here we have, now I know this is a much larger bowl, but we have a lot more to add. And I, I said this has a lot of mixing in it. It really does. Again, I'm scraping it now. This is one third of the um, the flour mixture. Now at this point, we've only added the third, and then we now have to add half of the coconut milk. And then again, I'm gonna have to mix it just until it is combined. So a half of the, the coconut milk is gonna be about three quarters of a cup. Now this is one cup. I'm just gonna try to add in, leave about, there we go leaves about a third in there. Now I have to blend this with my hand mixer. Oh, there's more and more all the time. So there we have the coconut milk has been added and I need to scrape it down again. You see how it splatters all up on the sides. Get my spatula. I just keep using the same one. Not as thick as it was. It looks like biscuit dough. <laughs> kind of see how it's um still holds it, but not quite as not quite as well. It's not quite as firm. Okay. Next, we're going to mix in another third of the flour mixture. Um, so we're going to mix in another third and then follow that up with the rest of the coconut milk. So we're going to add some more flour. I'm not measuring it exactly. I just kind of do that. And now again, I have to mix this. And there we have... Now we have two-thirds of the flour in the mixture. I'm just, you always end up with some on the sides. Okay, now we got to pour in the rest of the coconut milk. So here we have about a third of a cup. And I needed, wait, I can't remember how much I needed total. <laughs> Coconut milk, one and one third cups, okay. We have this nice liquid in here, and I'm going to have to mix this in now. So I imagine in just a minute it's going to be a lot more, a lot runnier than it is now. Okay, I have just finished mixing in the rest of the uh, coconut milk. I did get a little bit out. I realized I put too much coconut milk in there. So before I blended it, I actually kind of scooped some out to make sure I didn't put too much. I'm not going to comment on what my mixer did. <laughs> I'm, I'm like a 12 year old at heart, honestly. That just made me laugh. Actually, it kind of looks like an owl. If you're not Beavis and Butthead, it looks a little bit like an owl. 
like here's a wing or something. I don't know. Anyway, let's scrape it down again. As you can see, it's a lot more, much more runny. <laughs> starting to look like actual cake batter now. Okay, so now we've added in two-thirds of the flour mixture approximately, the rest of the coconut milk, and now we're going to mix in the last bit of the flour mixture. So now I have to use my hand mixer again to incorporate this last bit of flour. So you can just see how runny that is. Now this flour will help it be less runny, but it's still going to be pretty runny. But that's okay because it's cake batter. It's not supposed to be super firm. It's not bread dough. So let me go blend that and then we'll see how it looks. And there we have it. Now we have all of the flour in there. And the coconut milk and the flour, like the flour mixture, sugar, coconut milk, all kinds of goodies. It's still pretty runny. So that's perfect, actually. Look how pretty that is. So silky. <laughs> Very nice. All right, now what do we do? Okay. In a separate mixing bowl, using an electric hand mixer, well, that's good, whip six egg whites. So that's going to be these four plus these two, six egg whites with cream of tartar on medium high speed until stiff but not dry peaks form. So let me grab a bowl. I'm going to find a bowl. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the egg whites and pour them into this bigger bowl. That's two of them there. And then here in this little bowl, I have four more. And then in here is the cream of tartar. And I'm just going to lightly, I mean, there's not much of it. It's only an eighth of a teaspoon. But I'm just going to lightly sprinkle that over the top of the egg whites. And what I'm going to have to do now is use my hand mixer on this. To uh, You have to whip it for quite a while to form your stiff peaks, but not dry. You don't want to whip them too long. You only want stiff peaks. And the cream of tartar helps make that possible. So once I get that done, I'm going to show you what that looks like. Here we have them. If you've never done this before, you might not have expected <laughs> to get this from egg whites. But there it is. I think I might have overdone it just a tad. They're a little dry. I mean, you can still, well, they're, they're a little dry, but see how it kind of stands up on its own? It'll do, it'll be okay. So we have this nice fluffy mixture here. That's just six egg whites and an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar right there. I can almost, almost stand my spoon in it a little bit. All right, so there we have our egg whites. And next, using a rubber spatula, we're going to carefully fold a third of this mixture into the cake batter at a time and fold just combined after each addition. You don't want to overmix and deflate your egg whites. So let me grab the, the, cake, the cake mix. And I've just been using the same spatula. I don't think I'm going to need the spoon anymore. I'll take that out. Well, actually I do because I'm going to need to get... So we're going to do about a third of it. I'm just going to kind of drop it in there. Like 
like that. Okay. And when you fold it, and I am no expert, so you're not going to take, you're not going to take your spatula and just go, you know, violently shush it around in there. You're just lifting it up, folding it over. So you're not, you're not mashing on it too hard. I'm not pressing down on it. I'm just folding it over and over on itself. And this bit keeps trying to escape. <laughs> It's not going to be completely blended. Now we need to add some more. Let's see. All right. This is going to make your cake. So light and fluffy. And if you've never made a cake from scratch, there is a huge difference in the taste, I think. Everybody might not agree, but I, I do think it tastes better. And the, one of the reasons I wanted to do this, I'm going to take it to my dad tomorrow. It's kind of a surprise. One of the reasons I wanted to do it is because a year ago, uh, this time last year, we, he gave us all a scare. He ended up in the hospital. Um, he had pretty severe pneumonia. And his doctor, who was an idiot, told him all he needed to do was go home and rest. <laughs> that, he went to the doctor and his doctor said, Oh, yeah, it may be pneumonia, but you'll be fine. Just... Just go home and get some rest. You'll be fine. Well, fortunately, my dad's wife had the presence of mind to say, no, you are too sick. He could barely walk. I mean, he was so weak, he could barely walk. And fortunately, he is not going to that doctor anymore. I, I, mm. We all threatened to kill him ourselves if he ever went to that man again. My... My dad's wife took him straight to the emergency room from the doctor's office, and they admitted him immediately. Um, he was very, very sick, and he was in the hospital for quite a while. I think he was there about a week, and he also started to develop some heart issues while he was there to compound the, the issue. And uh, so we were really kind of concerned, but he's okay now. He's totally fine now. He... He made a full recovery, and he is doing fine. And I, I'm never going to forget that. It was a very, very scary week for, for a lot of us. So, his favorite dessert is a coconut cake. There, I don't want to mix that anymore. His favorite dessert is a coconut cake. So, I'm making him a coconut cake. Okay, now that we've folded in the egg whites, let's see here. Now we're going to divide the batter among the prepared cake pans. So you're going to put, obviously, a third in each can. Spread the batter, each pan, <laughs> spread the batter into an even layer and bake in the preheated oven until the toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean about 19 to 22 minutes. So let's go ahead and get those cake pans. All right, here we have our first pan, and you see it's it's buttered, and the the parchment paper kind of sticks to it, and the top of the parchment paper is also buttered. So this part always makes me nervous. I'm afraid I'm going to pour too much in there. <laughs> we could, you know, what we could do. We could just scoop it out with a spoon, and then of course you want to make sure you spread it evenly. Smells good, honestly, already. You can really smell the coconut. 
because it has coconut milk as well as um, coconut extract in there. Okay. And then of course I have to, I'm always afraid I'm putting too much in there. If I have a bunch left over, I'll just distribute it. So there's, there's one. Here's the second one. You can see a lot of the egg whites in there. That's okay though. You don't want to smush them up too much and deflate them. the third and final pan. I'm going to slide that paper over a little. There. I think I'll move this spatula. I have a lot here. I think I'm going to have to distribute some of this. See if I can get a little bit more of this out and put it in one of those other pans. This one. taking the back of the spoon. I'm not really pressing down. I'm just kind of moving it in a circular motion to help spread that batter evenly. Try to shake some off of there. Try to get as much in there as I can. Okay. Now I'm going to bake these in the oven for 19 to 22 minutes until the toothpick comes out and while those bake, we're going to work on the icing. And then for the frosting, we actually don't, we don't have as many ingredients, so that's kind of cool. For the frosting, you are going to need 12 ounces of cream cheese, nearly at room temperature. So that's basically going to be one and a half of these packs, um, because each one is eight ounces, so it's going to be one and a half of those. And it's it's nice and soft. It's nearly at room temperature. Then we're going to need one teaspoon, again, of the coconut extract. So that's in here. It's nice and clear. Five cups of powdered sugar. So here we have five cups of this lovely stuff. And I just used the great value confectioner's powdered sugar. I used up almost the whole bag. <laughs> and then, finally, one and a half cups of shredded coconut. 
I got the sweetened coconut flakes, just the Walmart brand. I have some left in here. There's still about a half a bag, probably. Somewhere in there. So now let's look at our instructions. <clears throat> All right. For the coconut cream cheese frosting, the first thing we're going to do, according to this, uh, is that we are going to have an electric stand mixer fixed with fitted with the paddle attachment, which I don't have. So I'm going to have to use my electric mixer. I'm going to whip the butter and the cream cheese until smooth and fluffy. And then we will mix in the coconut extract after that. So here we have the butter and the cream cheese. All nice and softly blended. Look at that. Look how nice that looks. It's still pretty, pretty thick. <laughs> but now that we've done that, let's see. So we blended that together and then we are going to add the coconut extract and that's only one teaspoon. I'm going to lightly drizzle it over the top. Try to just here and there, dripping and drizzling it. Like that. Okay. So I added that. Now I'm going to have to mix in the coconut extract. Once I do that, we're going to add the powdered sugar and whip it on medium speed until smooth and fluffy. So let me go ahead and do the the coconut extract and then we'll Play with it again. Ooh, kind of looks like a face. Like you have two eyes and a, a nose and a smiley face. It smells really good. It is so creamy. I need my spatula. We just gonna we just scrape it down again. Now we're gonna mix in the powdered sugar, and it's a lot. It's five cups of powdered sugar, so it's quite a bit. And there, there's what it looks like before we add all of the powdered sugar to it. Look, it just hangs on the spatula. <laughs> you can't even shake it off. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really great. That's beautiful. So next, I'm going to incorporate the five cups of powdered sugar. And I'm going to blend it again until it is smooth and fluffy. Okay, so we have mixed up five cups of confectioner's sugar in here, the powdered sugar. And it was kind of funny, while I was mixing it, um, the mixture was too much for my little hand mixer. <laughs> and it killed it. It actually just killed it. So right in the middle of making this frosting, I had to run out and buy a new hand mixer. <laughs> but it was okay, though, while I was there. Um, I went to Walmart, and while I was there... I bought um, a little cake, a thing to, um, a little cake carrier while I was there. So I will have a convenient little, it's a little plastic cake carrier with a handle. So I'll have something to uh, carry it with, to put it in and take it. So anyway, here we have our icing. Now let's see what we need to do next. The cakes, the cakes are actually done. They're cooling on racks right now. So then we have to, um, we're going to chill as needed if the frosting seems runny, which I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's runny. Evie's trying Evie's trying to get out. You know, staring at the doorknob doesn't actually work, right? Okay. Um, I don't think we're going to need to chill it. Um, so what you're going to do, we're going to actually ice the cake with this. And let's see. So after you, after you ice it, you're going to add the shredded coconut, pressing gently on the sides to adhere. So once the cake layers cool, it's going to be time to ice our little cake and then add the coconut. So that, 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 I think that should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, now I have placed the first layer on this little thing and it comes with a nice cover and a handle. It's really cool. And I have my icing. 
I am not great at icing a cake. I will just go ahead and tell you now. Um, and I can't find, I had a little, um, a special spatula type thing that you're supposed to use to ice cakes with. And I can't find it anywhere. So I'm having to improvise with a um, small silicone spatula that I found in a drawer <laughs> while looking for the other one. This one's doing okay though. Again, I am not, I am not a professional at all. Um, my ex-mother-in-law, my former mother-in-law, was is a professional cake decorator. Talk about intimidation now. I mean, I saw the cakes that she, some of the pictures of cakes she had made, and it was, it was intimidating because I can't, I don't do that kind of thing. And she's been doing it for years, so. I had to tell my ex before he got married, I'm like, don't, ex don't expect that. If I make a cake, I hope you know that it, um, it's probably not going to look like that. <laughs> I just think it's, be honest. it's good to be honest up front. Just let them know what's going <laughs> to... Here's the deal. <laughs> okay. The problem I have is on the sides. Get down there. I try not to put it on super thick maybe I should do a little bit more but again you know if you need perfection if you need to see perfection in the things that you watch um, you may not want to watch the icing parts anyway this part isn't going to show <laughs> It doesn't matter if it isn't perfect. Now the sides are, you know what? Let's wait and do all the sides at once. What I'm going to do at this point is just put a layer of icing here. I'm trying to get up to the edge. I'll do a layer here and then we're going to put another layer of cake on there. Okay. Trying to center. It's a little, I, I should have leveled these layers, I guess, um, but I didn't. I don't think my dad's gonna worry about it too much. My hands are clean, I promise. I washed my hands. So you can see it's gonna be a pretty tall cake. Usually when I'm icing the layers, I will start in the middle and put my dollop of icing on there and then just spread it out like this it smells great I will say it, it smells really good and we haven't even added any of the coconut flakes yet it has a very very pleasant smell actually <clears throat> from baking it the whole house smells really good <laughs> it smells so yummy in here Neither of my kids likes coconut cake. They don't, they don't like it. They, they won't eat it. Oh, my dad is going to love this. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm just glad I still have him here. You know, we, he gave us a scare last year. I didn't know what was going to happen. He'll be 80 next year. That's hard to believe. Now again, I know I know the sides look really rough right now, but we're going to cover all that up. Right now, the main thing I'm worried about is just covering this top part here. Just kind of taking some of this icing, <clears throat> going all the way up to the very edge. Okay. 
It's gonna look better soon. <laughs> Sorry, that one didn't want to let go of the cooling rack. Now, ooh, <laughs> that's a tall cake. That's um, that's a really tall. I'm t I'm bending down to look at it. <laughs> That's a, yeah, it's like a big, looks like a Big Mac or something. <laughs> okay. And one cool thing about coconut cakes, <clears throat> one cool thing about them is that um, if the icing doesn't look perfect, it really doesn't matter because once you put the coconut on, it kind of covers up all the imperfections. Yeah, it, it really kind of does. It's, um... It's interesting how that works, but once you add the coconut, it's like a it's like a camouflage of some sort. I don't know how to describe it. It just kind of is. I know it looks lopsided over here, but it's it's really not. It's actually straight. I know it doesn't look straight, but I'm looking right at it, and it is. Yeah, if you're if you're a perfectionist, you don't want to watch me do this. I think my son is upstairs wrestling an elephant. He keeps dropping something on the floor. <laughs> I don't know if he's weightlifting or what he's doing, but he keeps dropping something on the floor. And it shakes the ceiling. <laughs> and Evie is restless. She, um, keeps, keep, right now she's trying to open the doors to get to the washing machine. I think she's bored. I struggle with the sides of the cake. And you're gonna get some down here, but you can always go around like with um, a wet paper towel or a wet cloth or something and, and clean that right up. Oh, I got too much. This is the first cake I've made in a while. We did that pig picking cake. That was a while ago and it wasn't this big. Actually, I think this spatula is working really well. I like the flat, the fact that it's a little flexible. I think that actually makes it work better. get ready to add the coconut, we're going to have to press it into the icing on the sides to make it stay. Some always falls down here though. Yeah, that happens every time. It is a little bit of a messy cake because of the loose coconut. Ooh, I missed a spot. I missed a bunch of spots. It's hard for me to see it. But 
But again, if you miss spots, it, it really doesn't matter. Because once you add that coconut, it's going to cover all that up anyway. briefly at the stand mixers while I was in Walmart finding a hand mixer. You know a decent hand stand mixer is about $200. I would get one, but honestly, I wouldn't use it enough to justify having it. And I don't want to have to store it the rest of the time. I mean, I would almost never use it. If I did stuff like this a lot, I would get one, but I really don't. I don't bake, I don't, I just, it's not something I do very often at all. Good thing we have a lot of icing. When in doubt, cover it with icing. <laughs> oh, yeah. bits that are getting down here. I'm going to clean that up. But there's no point in doing it now. I'm just going to wait until I finish this part and then clean it all up in one. Just a big, like, just a big spot there. It's hard for me to see it from the angle where I am.
I think I got the layers a little lopsided, but I promise my dad's not going to care. He's going to think this is so cool. He had an aunt who used to make coconut cakes for him on his birthday every year, and she made them from scratch. I don't think I can compare. He said hers were just the best he's ever had, but I think you'll like this one too. Okay, now I need to go around here and clean this off. Let's see. paper towel and see how this does. Oops. <laughs> that didn't work. get up too close. He already wiped off some of the icing. Okay. So, at this point, we have our nice fluffy coconut. I'm just going to drizzle some on the top. Don't be skimpy with it. Go and pile it on there. And I'm just patting it a little bit, patting it down into the icing. Okay. And then to get it on the sides, you just take some and you're just going to kind of pat it on there and it's going to fall down. Kind of a messy process. Get it all over your fingers. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but I think this would be a fun thing to do with kids. Let them do this because you will get it all over your hands. I mean, it's you just it's unavoidable. Yeah, so it's a little lopsided. <laughs> he is not going to care, I promise you. A little more up there. It looks like a 
furry Muppet. Okay. I'm gonna do a little tidying up here, but check it out. Unfortunately, I cannot cut it and taste it for you. I'm going to save that for my dad. But, check that out. I think it turned out kind of nice. There it is. Our lovely coconut cake. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. I will see you again really soon. Bye bye.